as someone who can't remove his mask since his face has melted due to radiation. And removing the mask is impossible since my skull has grown new facial tissues that literally connect to the mask. I do believe that I have the qualifications to discuss this topic. Anywho, what is radiation? Radiation is like that friend who shows up uninvited. Sometimes they're harmless. And other times, they're the reason your hair falls out. In simple terms, radiation is energy traveling through space or materials in waves or particles. It's what powers your microwave burritos, lights up the sun, and makes certain bananas slightly more radioactive than others. Yes, bananas. Look it up. Radiation comes in two flavors, ionizing and non-ionizing. Non-ionizing radiation is the chill cousin, responsible for radio waves, visible light, and your Wi-Fi signal. It's generally harmless, unless you count the existential dread caused by slow internet speed bad, which in that case, a little bit of patience goes a long way. Ionizing radiation, on the other hand, is the edgy sibling. This bad boy has enough energy to knock electrons out of atoms, potentially causing cancer, damaging DNA, or making materials radioactive through activation. Fun fact, we're constantly exposed to background radiation from the Earth and cosmos. Sharing a bed? Congrats! You're both radiating affection. And gamma rays. Serves you right, you normies? Anywho, where was I? Oh yeah. Now that we got what is radiation covered, it's time to learn how it affects your body. As I said earlier, there are two main types of radiation. Ionizing and non-ionizing. Since non-ionizing radiation lets you use your phone and allows you to track your partner, who is suspiciously in a parking lot for two hours, we will focus more on ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is the distinct troublemaker between the two. It's the stuff that, if you were a DNA and had a daughter, you'd probably tell her to stay away from him, because he'll not only ruin her life and future prospects, but has a high chance of murdering her and everyone she loves. But don't just take my word for it. History has plenty of receipts on this bad boy. The first documented health incident? Cue the 1920s radium girls. These factory workers painted watch styles with radium, or radium, and for some reason, were instructed to, I kid you not, lick their brushes for precision. Now my brain may be glowing, and my face melting, but licking something that sounds, tastes, and looks to be not suitable to be ingested is not a good idea. Their bones began to rot from the inside out. Lawsuits followed, and it became crystal clear that ionizing radiation wasn't just dangerous. It was most dangerous. Get it? <laughs> most dangerous, because you know, <laughs> just dangerous. Okay, I'll stop. But the hits kept coming, because ionizing radiation wasn't about to let humanity off the hook. Enter the infamous Demon Core incidents in the 1940s. The Demon Core was a sphere of plutonium being prepped for nuclear testing and it proved that even inanimate objects can have murderous intent. In 1945, physicist Harry Daglian accidentally dropped a tungsten carbide brick onto the core during an experiment. This caused a criticality accident, releasing a lethal burst of radiation. Harry received a fatal dose and died weeks later, making the demon core's kill count officially one. Not to be outdone, the demon core struck again in 1946. This time, Louis Slotin was conducting a similarly risky experiment involving two half spears of beryllium and a plutonium core. He used a screwdriver, yes, a screwdriver, to keep the spheres apart while testing. The tool slipped, the spheres closed, and bam! A flash of blue light. Slotin heroically flipped the setup apart, saving others in the room, but not himself. He died nine days later from acute radiation poisoning. At this point, the demon core was like, Wanna add more incidents in history, huh? Come on! I'm available all day! Come on! Come on! And scientists stopped handling nuclear material like it was IKEA furniture. The incident became a grim reminder that ionizing radiation doesn't just break DNA. It breaks careers, bones, and anyone unlucky enough to get too close. But I'm a strong man. Those guys were nerds and girls who earned minimum wage. Radiation has got nothing on me. 
Well, even though your body may be sculpted like a Greek god and be healthier than an ox, but your DNA is something that you can't train like your muscles. Your DNA is like the blueprint for building a human being, an intricate and complicated instruction manual. The problem is, when radiation hits your DNA, it's like a toddler with a crayon scribbling all over it. Ionizing radiation can break the chemical bonds in your DNA strands, causing mutations. These mutations are not the cool kind, like growing extra arms like your favorite cartoon alien when you were a kid. These are the bad kinds, which can lead to all sorts of health issues. Like a cold, a flu, or people who still believe that the world is flat even though time and time again they were proved wrong? Well, maybe in a better world, Charlie. Instead, it gives you cancer. Definitely cancer. Not all mutations are instant disasters, though. Some mutations get fixed, as your body has repair mechanisms in place to fix a lot of the damage. But the longer you're exposed to radiation, the more likely those fixes get sloppy, and eventually your body might say, I quit! I'm not being paid enough to do this. We aren't getting paid in the first place. Oh yeah. So what happens if you don't work? Well, that'll probably lead to a halt in the body's entire process. A couple of genes broken. Oh, and cancer. Yep, definitely cancer. Oh. Unpaid labor it is then. While radiation is mostly a DNA troublemaker, it also likes to target organs and tissues that are rapidly dividing. That's why certain organs are more vulnerable to radiation damage than others. Here's a quick rundown on what body parts radiation affects in a not-so-good way. First, we got the skin. If you ever spend too much time in the sun without sunscreen, you know how UV radiation can leave your skin red, crispy, and well done? Sunburns are the result of UV radiation causing damage to the skin cells. Over time, this can lead to premature aging, or even, you guessed it, skin cancer. Think of your skin as the frontline soldier in the radiation war. It tries its best to protect you, but too much UV exposure makes it wave the white flag. Next would be the hair follicles. If you've ever undergone radiation therapy for cancer treatment, you might have noticed your hair falling out. Why? Well, radiation targets cells that divide rapidly, like the ones in your hair follicles. This can temporarily or permanently affect your ability to grow that luscious mane of hair. So when you lose your hair due to radiation, just know that it's not you, it's the radiation's fault, or genetics, because you might have a gene that makes you go bald. The bone marrow. Your bone marrow is like a little factory that churns out your blood cells. Radiation, however, doesn't care about your bone marrow's hustle. High doses of radiation can severely damage this factory, leading to a drop in red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. This can result in anemia, a weakened immune system, and difficulty clotting when you get a cut. Basically, you become a walking paper, fragile and prone to bruising. And last but not least, the lungs. If you're exposed to high doses of radiation over a long period of time, like nuclear accident fallout long, your lungs can and will take a hit. Chronic exposure to radiation, for example, can increase the risk of lung cancer. So while you believe you're inhaling fresh air, Radiation might be silently creeping into your respiratory system. The scary part about radiation is that its effects aren't always immediately obvious. Sure, you might experience hair loss or the ability to remove your mask, but the long-term damage is what's really sneaky. Chronic exposure to low levels of radiation like living near a nuclear power plant or frequently getting x-rays can accumulate over time, which will inevitably lead to cancer rather serious conditions years down the road. It's like radiation's way of saying, I'll be back in a few decades. So in conclusion, radiation is like everything. Too much good is bad. Too much bad is bad. Rainy weather makes me sad. Subscribe.